You look totally different without your glasses. Of course, you look totally different without my glasses. But. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the day the Lord has made. Amen to that. Any prayers or news of concerns or, or first of all, let's thank Robbie for the coffee this morning. She made the coffee. Um, we had movie night last night. And... We're going to be starting the movie night earlier, starting next week. We're going to start it at 7 with a setup, starting at 6.30, um, because it is dark enough at 7. But so we're watching the two episodes last night, and it is 9.45, and the second episode goes off. Third episode starts, and I stand up to get ready to turn everything off, and nobody else wants to move. So we just kept watching that third episode. Ten minutes later, the kids realized what time it was, and they started leaving. So we decided that's it, two. Two's the limit. So 7 p.m. starting next week. So come out, join us, bring a chair, bring a blankie. We'll have chairs here if you don't. And uh, we'll have snacks of some sort, probably pizza this week. And then um, it starts with season three, episode two, I believe, if you haven't. We just got done watching. It was about the Sermon on the Mount. 
Um, any other news or joy or concern? Yes, ma'am. Hi. We will definitely keep you in prayer. So I, now I met you last week. What is your daughter's name? Alayla. Alayla. Alayla Lynn. Alayla Lynn. Yes. There's a southern part in there somewhere, the Leia Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And it's good to see you back here. Yes, Alan. Prayers for cousin Cindy, who's having knee surgery. What day? Wednesday. Wednesday. Knee surgery on Wednesday. Merle, how's Pauline doing? She's doing Okay. One way or another, that could change. Okay. Something I've learned about, you know, my parents is everything's fluid. Everything can change every day. Literally. Mary, you didn't call, you didn't ask me, you didn't expect me to do this, but have any, any news on Belinda? Um, no, just the same. She's not feeling you know, it. Yeah. So we'll keep her and Charlie in our prayers. Um, Dad had a fantastic Sean. I want to thank you for the recommendation. Um, Dad and uh, Dad went to see a wound care specialist at the local hospital just to make sure everything's doing well. She was a little concerned and sent them back to Pittsburgh. They go to Pittsburgh and the doctor says, "Why are you back here? Everything's fine. Everything's healing. It's just slow. And next time, feel free to send me pictures." I'm like, "Okay." So, Belick or Belak. Um, fantastic, you know, rave reviews. If she can tolerate my sister and my mom in the same room, she is an angel. Um, any others? Prayers? Yes. When we start this week with the two packs of John Humbert, so it's always a prayer that everything works well and we've got enough food for the year. Oh, yes. And um, hopefully we will be having a food giveaway this month. I don't yes. Know the yet. I saw it on the calendar for next month, which starts Tuesday, but um, I didn't, you know, I'm not sure if that's the exact date or not. The 17th should be. Okay. The third of the month. Okay, so let's keep everybody on the same page here. So we have the John Humbert backpack food. There is also the food pantry food. There is also the food from John Humbert that we give out to the parents at John Humbert. Plus, we are now starting a collection to start our very own food pantry to pick up the difference and the slack that we're going to be missing when some of the programs aren't going to be able to do as much as they used to. So we're going to try to start our own to help that. In addition to that, we have the Toys for Happiness, which I was confused with Toys for Tots, but it's not. They are for little kids, but they're not tots. They're happy. Um, so anywhere from age zero to age 14, there's a box that is in the entranceway. Feel free to bring stuff in, drop them off. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And speaking of veterans and homeless, and um, not to belittle them, but um, let's also pray for the entire southeastern United States right now. Um, so many places that I grew up going to are um, still devastated in the floods and Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, parts of Tennessee, parts of North Carolina, the whole southeastern. There's a friend who her daughter lost her house and everything. And that's countless, countless families that are like that. So let's keep them in our prayers. And anything else? Oh, um, Bible study resumes this Tuesday at 12 noon. There's also the youth Bible study, which starts on online on the Facebook group um, this coming Monday. Get into it anytime you want to. We have our very first trial run at a prayer service Wednesday, 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Um, we're going to get a movie night at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Anything else? We end our collection for the AC students today. Yes. Uh, the 1st of October, we start collecting for the animal shelter. Animal shelter? All you dog lovers and cat lovers, they need everything. Yes.
So please keep that in mind. And Cooper, when is the women's meeting? This Wednesday. At what time? Six. Six o'clock. So you'll be finished right when I'm starting the um the music up here. If the neighbor, if it's too loud, then just complain to the neighbors. Yes. Um, we have a celebrity in our midst today. Normally, I would ask one of my one of my ardent prayer warriors to come up here, and um, I still think I'm going to ask him to come up here. Cooper, can you come up here, please? Come on, you you're on your own, big man. Because you know why you're on your own. Come here, let's turn around. Let's come up here and turn around. You know why you're on your own? What happens Tuesday? It's his birthday. He turns 32. I turned six. You turned six? He said he was getting ready to shave. No, you didn't. So let's sing happy birthday to Cooper. You're going to dance with me? Happy birthday to you. Now let's bow our heads and pray. What would you like to pray for? That we don't sing anymore? <laughs> what would you like to pray for? What are you thankful for today? That my mom and dad comes. That your mom and dad come to church. A family that prays together stays together. So let's bow our heads and say, and let's, let's start it off. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us here together today. We thank you so much for the blessing that is uh, Cooper and Hadley and all the kids that are here today. We thank you so much for all of our blessings. Even when there's a rainstorm, we know that you're there with us to keep us safe and to help us get through it. In your name we pray. Amen. Good job, man. Somebody told me this morning they just moved here and they don't know anybody. So let's get up and let's greet each other in the name of Christ. Let's say hi to everybody. Tell them, tell them, say, Pastor, your shoes look nice. Pastor, you did your hair real nice today. Get up and greet each other. Come on, Linda.
Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you could, please rise and join me in the call to worship as it is in the bulletin. <clears throat> People of God, who do you come to worship? We come to worship a God. But how will you worship? Not with words Come, you who belong to God, come, you who are foolish in the eyes of the world. Amen, amen. Please be seated unless you are a penguin. If you could, please follow along with me as the prayers of the people that is in the bulletin. And please rise. Loving God, we come this morning seeking to abide in your presence. Open our minds to your spirit of wisdom that we may know how to live as your people. Open our hearts to your spirit of truth that we may love all your people with a love that speaks of justice, kindness, and radical grace. May this time of worship be authentic and pleasing to you. Amen, amen. If you could, please remain standing and join me in singing, Oh, How I Love Jesus, hymn number 170. 
Amen, amen. Please be seated. Unless your last name is Thomas, then please come forward. And unless your first name is Hadley, please come forward. As we prepare our morning tithes and offerings, I don't get volunteers, I get victims. Come on. Okay, the secret is you can always say no, just not during the service. No. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have, I'm going to give you a plate to go over there. You got the middle. You're going to have a plate over there, and then you just swap back and forth. There you go. Down that aisle. Down that aisle. Please rise. God of all blessings, your, your beloved Son teaches, teaches all we need to know to claim the life that you have hoped for us. In spite of that, we live like the rest of the world that is eager to, to just accumulate and, and we're reluctant to give, showering adoration on the rich and powerful and, and pushing the poor and powerless. And we bring to you our gifts, which are the result of your blessing. Help us to remember who Jesus called truly blessed, we pray in the name of our teacher and Savior as he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, amen. Please be seated, unless you are one of the kids in church. Come on. Come on, Hadley Cooper. Come on. Let's all join hands together because I can guarantee you this is the most dangerous part of the service. I want you all to have a seat. You never know what they're going to say. Then again, I never know what I'm going to say. So you've got a birthday coming up on Tuesday. And I remember when I was, my gosh, she's got the best posture. Can we all sit like that for a second? Just, just. Good, good. Look, all three of you. Cooper, don't slouch. (laughs) So whenever, so have you ever been somewhere with with your your mom and you really wanted something and she says, maybe. When I was, when I was young and I did that, mom, that's her way of saying no. (laughs) Maybe meant that chance ain't going to happen. But she didn't want to hurt my feelings. So, have you ever had your mom tell you no? Quite often. So have you ever had a case where, it might, it might just be me when I was Cooper's age, when mom would tell me no, and next thing you know, you're trying to see how much of attention you can draw from everybody around you by throwing a temper tantrum. Have you ever gotten really mad at your mom and dad, or your mom, your aunts, your uncles, your brother? She rolled her eyes. So now what happens when that happens is we have to learn who we are. So everything in life isn't going to be, yes, blessing, 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 blessing. So we need to look at today's message. And last night's, if you all were here, the um, show was about the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount was the first part, and we're going to talk about it today, is about the Beatitudes. That's a very big word. Can you all say Beatitudes? Beatitudes, you all know what that word means? Good qualities, good character, good values. So I'm going to send you home with homework today. And when you leave church and you go home, the homework is, what do you think are the top five values that people in the world value? So what do you think are the top five values of people in the world? Not Christ, not Jesus, but the world. I'll give you one of them. We tend to like people that are rich, don't we? We tend to look like celebrities, movie stars, musicians, stuff like that. So we're going to figure out what exactly values are important to the world. And then we're going to figure out when we meet again next week like this, and we're going to figure out what values Jesus wants us to have. So let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us here together today. I know it's the first day of school, and... Well, for here it is, and we're already getting homework, and that's not fun, but this one will be fun. And next week, we know right after this, we'll be dismissed to Children's Church, and we'll have fun and activities, and there may be an activity, Christy, we may have, do I want to keep a secret? Tie-dyes. Somebody gave us the idea of doing tie-dye shirts. I'm not pointing names or fingers at anybody. But help us to remember in everything we do to honor your values and try to be the people that live up to and honor your values. In your name we pray, amen. So next week, you're going to come back, you're going to tell me about what the world values, and we're going to talk about what Jesus wants us to value. And then at this point, we would dismiss you to Children's Church, and you would learn a lesson, learn something, and then hopefully you learn something. I don't know. We're going to pray about that. And then there's also going to be an activity. And this week or this coming Sunday next week is going to be tie-dyes. We're going to have tie-dye shirts. What are you all going to do? So go back and sit in your regular pews. And then next week, thank you all. Next week, the chaos begins. If you could, though, please rise and join me in singing hymn number 314, In the Garden. 
not just the Boston Garden. Amen, amen. Please be seated. If you could, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Far too often, God, we, we desire, we want to look, we want to look wise in the eyes of the world. We have not spoken truth with our hearts. We've said and done hurtful things to our friends and our family. We have forgotten our true identity, wandering into ways that are not yours. We've lost the path of true worship, focusing on form and words rather than lives. We've forgotten what true discipleship is, and because of this, you have a quarrel with us. Forgive us and help us live into becoming the people you have created and called us to be, people of justice and love and truth and humility and, yes, even foolishness. May we be fools for Christ, embracing our true identity, even in the face of the world's scorn and derision. Please help us to open our ears, open our hearts, and open our lives to your words today. In your name we pray. Amen. So, far too often, far too often. So I really wish Charlie was here today, because this is an opening I really wanted Charlie to be here for. 
Because the question is, do you all remember the first concert you went to? I'm embarrassed to say my first, co- my first concert was at the Post Pavilion, and it was uh, Whitney Houston. And I'll never forget that concert. Charlie could tell us probably, he probably saw like Led Zeppelin or Queen or somebody like that live for the first time. But y'all, who here remembers their first concert? Corn, anybody seen Corn? No? Do y'all know who Corn is? Tim's back there shaking his head, no. So now just think back to all those concerts from, from years ago, back in the 70s, and how easy it was to, to imagine large gatherings at stadiums and theaters and, and even those Billy Graham crusades, you know, preachers and spiritual teachers easily filling aquar- um, auditoriums. But it was back then. Could you imagine now walking for a day, walking miles upon miles upon miles on foot? Again, how else are you going to walk? But on foot, in sandals or slides, hungry, thirsty. You got the elements to deal with. Maybe there's even danger on the road. And just to, uh, just to hear some obscure rabbi from Nazareth. Now, we do know that Jesus was not just an obscure teacher selling the latest and greatest answer to everything. We know know a hack when we see one. But when Jesus spoke, E.F. Hutton, when Jesus spoke, you listened. Because he spoke with divine authority. He was an, an author of the law and not just an interpreter. So Jesus saw the crowds gathering and And he went up on a mountainside, and there he sat down, he began to teach. Maybe the last time the Jewish people gathered in such a large crowd was uh, some teachings from the Lord was was at Sinai. Similar, they listened in trembling reverence to the words and the instructions of God for their very lives at that one. That was also when God gave the Ten Commandments to to the children of, of Israel. This time, however, the Sermon on the Mount, instead of with fire and smoke, God visited his people in in the form of a man. He sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to dwell with us in human flesh. And Jesus also experienced hunger, thirst, bitterness, and suffering just as we do. Jesus' words evoked the same reverence in those listening and in us today. As we listen to his words over 2,000 years later, in Matthew 5 through 7, Jesus expands upon the Torah. It's not only, you know, following of of the instruction, but, but following the words and intentions of the scripture with your very heart. It's fulfilling the spirit of the law as, as well as the letter of the law. Jesus raised the bar. He raises the standard of the law. The first part, and we talked about that word, Beatitudes. And on the Mount of Beatitudes, Jesus pointed out our weaknesses. He showed us that we are not able to keep the Torah in our own will, our own strength. That we rely on him to follow the Torah in the spirit by walking with him. See, the end goal is not to follow a command for the sake of of keeping the commandments. It's to follow the command out of love, out of obedience to the one who instructs us. And I want to look at the beginning of this. Let's look at, um, we're going to look at Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Apparently I have spilled coffee in this Bible at one point. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. So here's some of those values we talked about in the children's message. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. When he saw the crowds, he went up to the side of a mountain and sat down. Jesus' disciples gathered around him and he taught them. God blesses those people who depend only on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. 
God blesses those people who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those people who are humble. The earth will belong to them. God blesses those people who want to obey him more than to eat or drink. They will be given what they want. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will be treated with mercy. God blesses those people whose hearts are pure. They will see him. God blesses those people who, who make peace. They will be called his children. God blesses those people who are treated badly for doing right. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God blesses, God will bless you when people insult you, when they mistreat you, and tell all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. Be happy and excited. You will have a great reward in heaven. People did these things to the, to the prophets who lived long ago. Such is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. That's a lot to, to, to live up to, isn't it? But there you have a description of what every Christian is meant to be. It's not just the, the description of some sort of exceptional Christian. Jesus does not say here that certain outstanding characteristics are going to be rewarded. It's a picture of every believer in Christ. Jesus says that this is the only kind of person who is truly blessed, truly happy. Someone suggested once that it can be put like this. This is the sort of person who is to be congratulated. This is the sort of person to be envied, for he alone is truly happy. And happiness or blessing is is the kind of question that is confronting everybody around us today. The whole world is, is longing for happiness. A lot of times we say it, it's just do what makes you happy. And sadly, we see it repeated over and over again. Many ended up in, in more misery than when they started out. Jesus gives us the principles and the beatitude gives us the principles in finding fulfillment and happiness in this world. And if you really want to be happy, then here is the way. The first thing we need to know is that, one, all Christians, all of us, each one of us are to be like this. This is not for a selected few. This is not the standard for pastors and then everybody else gets free will. No. Jesus meant it for all. It's a description of what every one of us can be, is meant to be. You can be blessed whether you are a, a full-time Christian pastor or just an ordinary believer, or if this is even just your first time stepping into a church. Man tends to have such a distinction between, between a, a, a pastor and, and just ordinary Christians. I'm a sinner just like y'all. Because they are, they are a pastor full time or doing more of God's work, they are better blessed or they enjoy a certain degree of blessing others do not have. No. From the scriptures, we can see there is no such distinction. We are all called to be saints and to be blessed in this way. The Beatitudes, they are a description of a character, not an office, not a talent. The Bible talks about different offices, you know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and they, they help the church. The Bible also talks about spiritual gifts so that, so that members can build up the church. And we need, desperately need everybody's gifts because we are all one body. But this has nothing to do with blessing. God blesses a character, not an office not a title, not a particular gifting. He blesses a character. We're all called to exemplify everything that is contained here in the Beatitudes. And number two, you can't have two, you can't have one without having a two. So number two, Jesus expects us to, to manifest, to live out all of these characteristics. It's not a pick which one you like. We'd like to do that. But it's not a pick which one do you like and be like that, and you'll be blessed. That's not the way it works. Apparently, this is a, a composite picture 
of what a Christian can be and what a Christian ought to be. It's not right to say some are meant to be poor in spirit, some are meant to mourn, and some are meant to be peacemakers, and so on, so forth. It's like the fruit of the Spirit that's mentioned in Galatians 5.22. It is one fruit. You are able to, to manifest, to live out all nine aspects of, of the fruit. And although we may manifest one aspect more than others from time to time, we can't split them up as if we can be contented to, to have love, but not self-control. To have joy, but not kindness. God expects us to become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, to be fully Christ-like in every aspect of our lives. In other words, this is achievable. We have to believe that we can. Similarly, here in the Beatitudes, one aspect may be more prominent than the others, but we need to grow in all of them. In fact, it seems that these qualities are, they are interlinked. We cannot have one without the others. You cannot truly mourn without hungering and thirsting for righteousness. You can't do that without being one who is meek and a peacemaker. So we can, we can look at the Beatitudes at, as a complete whole. Just like the fruit of the Spirit. Don't divide them. Grow and all of them. And number three, none of these descriptions are what we may call natural human tendency. These aren't moral pursuits. In fact, these qualities aren't in worldly terms. Hence, there's the homework for the kids for tomorrow, for next week. The list here is not a reference to some personality traits or some good temperaments that we can, we can cultivate. This is not a moral education class that Jesus is advocating, hoping to change some of us into good moral beings. These are spiritual qualities. They are not learned abilities. No man naturally conforms to the descriptions here given in the Beatitudes. Jesus is not describing for us some, some natural qualities or some natural temperaments, like, like some people being more meek than others. They're characteristics that can be made possible in each of our lives because of God. And it is by God's grace that we can grow to be like this. It also means it is possible for all of us to, for all of us to display each of these characteristics, regardless of our personalities or our temperaments or our level of sarcasm or our degree of bad jokes. And finally, we see it number four. The Beatitudes set a different benchmark from the world. There's a clear difference between the way a Christian and a non-Christian live their lives. And take a quick look at the, at the list. The expressions, poor in spirit, mourn, meek, merciful, they seem to be more of a description of what the world would call a weakling. The world seeks for, for a, a person of strength or, or confidence, a person in charge, and a fighter. Billy Graham says that the world will say it is this way, happy are the clever, for they shall inherit the admiration of their friends. Happy are the aggressive, for they shall inherit property. Happy are the talented, for they shall inherit a career. Happy are the rich, for they shall inherit a world of friends and a house full of modern gadgets. This is the kind of person that the world admires. Yet the Beatitudes, they, they paint a, a contrasting picture. Blessed are those who, who are hunger and who thirst for righteousness, not wealth, not money, not status, not position, not popularity. Blessed has nothing to do with knowledge, wealth, health, status, or fame. And I realize you can see the measure of a true Christian by the things that that person is seeking, the things that that person really 
really wants. The non-Christian can only live for this world. He says, this is the only world. I'm going to get out of it all I can. The Christian starts by saying, I'm not living for this world. His whole outlook, his whole ambition is different. It's clear that we are called to be different from the rest. We are called to act and behave in a different way. And this is how Peter describes us in, in 1 Peter 2. In 1 Peter 2, 9 and 11. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And then in 11 he goes, Friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sinful desires. You see, the distinction between a Christian and a non-Christian must be maintained. We can't blur the line. We can't make the world and the church looking alike. They're not going to. Notice the first beatitude and the last beatitude promise the same reward. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus starts and ends with this because it's his way of saying that the first thing you have to realize about yourself is that you belong to a different kingdom. You belong to a different king. The Bible makes it clear that we are living in two absolutely different worlds. Yes, you are in this world, but no, you are not of this world. Our conduct is paramount in reaching out to the world for Christ. John 17, 20 to 23, he says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray, for all, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given, in 22, he goes on to say, I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them, you and me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. See, Jesus, he used the phrase, that the world may believe that you have sent me. He used that phrase twice. Our conduct, specifically our love for one another. And I don't mean in words. I mean in what, how we live, how we treat each other, how we, how we show grace and how we forgive and how we love. It's going to cause the world to see Christ. And earlier in John, John 13, 35, Jesus said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Actions speak louder than we can ever imagine. And I remember the story that a minister was being shown through a large weaving mill where one of his, one of his congregation worked. Mentioning that, that particular employee to a foreman, the pastor said, I suppose that, I suppose that, that Jimmy, as one of your best workers. Foreman responded, no, sorry to say he isn't. The trouble with Jimmy is that he stands around talking about his religion when he ought to be attending to his, to his work. He's a good enough fellow and has a making of, of a fine weaver, but he hasn't learned yet that while he's on the job, his religion ought to come out of his fingers and not out of his mouth. It's a wise observation. During working hours, that employee's testimony should have come from the honest labor of his hands. A familiar, if y'all remember this, maybe nobody under my age will remember this, the Yellow Pages slogan that said, let your fingers do the walking. For the Christian who wants to point others to Christ, however, there are occasions when it's best to let your fingers do the talking. So here we see the eight qualities together 
that define the life of the citizen of God's kingdom. We are to grow and live, all of them, not by our own, but by the grace of God through the Holy Spirit. We are to live differently from the world. The distinction must remain clear cut. And the question we need to ask ourselves is, are we living out these kingdom qualities in our, in our daily life? We must make the ambition. We must make the ambition to do so because this is what we are meant to be. Let's bow our heads. God has called us and blesses us when we live God's ways and not the world's. God's love embraces us, embraces you, even when we fall short of what God desires for your life. Know that God of, know that the God of blessing loves and forgives you with a fierce tenderness. And in so knowing, may your life and your soul be transformed. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's please rise and let's come together in singing hymn number 328. One of my favorite hymns from prison ministry. Now let's turn over for our closing hymn, hymn number 585. You know this one by heart. Lead us out, Joe. Come on, this little light of mine. <laughs> Please be seated, everybody. I got a minute or two. Late last night, somewhere between the hours of 11 p.m. and 2 a.m., this really came to me, and it just kept coming to me in this song that we're playing also. So it's something I want you all to do for me. And tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning when your eyes open, you're still in bed. Your eyes open. Your feet have not hit the floor yet. Because we know that one your, once your feet hit the floor, it's over. You're not doing this. So before you, before your feet hit the floor, while you lay there in bed, before you get up, you know, I want you to pray. I want you to pray Romans 12, 1 to the Lord. And say, Lord, today I present this body to you as a, as a living sacrifice. And Lord, I mean, I, I give you the whole kitten caboodle, head to toe. 
I give you these hands for your service. These feet, Lord, these, these legs to go where you want them to go. Lord, I give you my eyes. I give you these ears. I even give you this mouth. And I offer it to you, Lord, a living sacrifice. God, I know that I've got a plan for the day. I mean, I've got a to-do list. We all have a to-do list. We all have a to-do list. And I know before the foundations of the world were even set, you already had a schedule. So God, I submit to you today, pray this, I submit to you today, and the Lord, here it is, here it is, guys, would you give me an awareness of your presence today? If you're moving in an unusual way, Lord, I don't want to miss it. I mean, if, if you're going to make the natural supernatural, don't you want to be aware of it? If he's going to be speaking, I, I don't want to miss a word. I don't want to miss a word that he has to say. So, Lord, if you're going to show up in, in an unusual way, would you make me aware of, of your presence? You'll be amazed when, when you pray that at the beginning of the day and how much you'll start to see with your spiritual eyes. You'll be amazed when, when you're standing at the longest grocery store line at Sam's Club or Target and the person behind you just trips and spills his Starbucks coffee all over you. And right before you turn around and give him or her a piece of your holy mind, you'll be amazed that something in you will remind you that you asked the Lord to show you his activity in everything. And it occurs to you that you might be the only Bible that that person reads today. So as we go forth, let's go forth and share the gospel. Let's share his grace, his forgiveness, his mercy, his love. In other words, let's go forth and share Jesus. Go forth and be blessed. Amen.
Yeah. 